Awesome. So welcome to the seventh session of Med AI, and um, we're very happy to um, have Joy on with us. Um, so she just introduced herself, but I'll give a brief introduction again. So she's a PhD student in computer science, working with um, <clears throat> Iman, uh, Judy, and Hari at um, Emory University, and her research interests include uh, medical image processing and um, also in out of distribution detection, I believe, um, for clinical deployment. So let, without further ado, let's let's hear from um, Sean about her talk. Um, just a quick question. Um, how, how would you like uh, us to ask questions? Do you want us to interrupt you in the middle or would you like it at the end? Um, I'm pretty welcome uh, uh, all the questions. Uh, so you can interrupt me uh, either during the talk or after the talk, so yeah. Happy to ask awesome. questions about this. Okay, yeah, take it away then. Thank you. Thanks uh, for the introduction. Um, so um, today I'm going to talk about the cementation and the quantification of breast arterial calcifications on mammograms. Um, and the um, our uh, so today's talk will be. Uh, first, the introduction of some backgrounds about this work and uh, some challenges uh, to solve the um, BAC cementation problem and uh, what kind of methods we can use to detect the BAC uh, in the mammograms. And uh, finally, uh, I will show you the quantifications of BAC results. <laughs> Uh, so here I'm showing you one mammogram in the red part. Uh, actually, a mammogram, uh, a mammogram is an X-ray picture of the breast uh, um, area. Uh, and doctors usually use a mammogram to look for some early signs of breast cancer. Um, as the breast cancer is the leading cause of women's deaths, so according to American Cancer Society's recommendations, uh, women aged 40, five to 54 uh, should get mammograms every year. So um, we can ha have the mammograms uh, data in the hospital um, very easily um, because we have a lot of patients. Um, but when the experts look, uh, look into the um, mammograms, they often see that uh, breast arterial calcifications um, with the, uh, in the uh, mammograms. And uh, uh, so actually the, this mammogram I'm showing uh, is one with the uh, breast arterial calcifications and you can, we can call it BAC in short. Um, and those, uh, breast, uh, those BAC area um, marked uh, actually uh, are located in the um, area that I marked in right. <clears throat> um, although there, um, they found that BAC may not uh, contribute to the uh, breast cancer development, but uh, there uh, are some studies showing that BAC might contribute to cardiovascular disease uh, and we call CVD in short. Now, uh, BAC can be utilized, uh, utilized uh, to um, get uh, some um, risk evaluation for the CVD events such as a heart attack and stroke. Uh, and the evaluation of BAC might be helpful in identifying those high risk women uh, without any additional cost or radiation exposure. So that's one um, um, benefits from the current data. Uh, and the, but there's one change that uh, if we do the detection uh, of BAC manually, it costs uh, a lot of time and efforts. So um, we want to develop a pipeline that can um, detect the BAC and uh, also do the quantification automatically uh, with the high accuracy. Um, but there are some challenges for us to do that. Um, this, uh, so this is the, the same mammogram I'm sh I showed before. Uh, and in right, I'm showing uh, it's a mask, it's a BAC mask. Um, and the, so those area in the case uh, uh, the BAC located, <laughs> and the uh, uh, BAC actually has uh, it have its own, uh, their own unique uh, unique characteristics. 
So usually they appear uh, the uh, our nasal uh, along with the uh, vessels, um, and uh, we they are often fragmented and discontinuous. Um, compared with the breast uh, area, breast tissue area, um, those uh, uh, BAC are often with high pixel intensities. And uh, uh, compared with the natural um, objects, those uh, breast uh, arterial calcifications are often in varied lengths and uh, width. Um, the other thing is that uh, a mammogram is usually very large in size they can be 4K by 3K in size, which totally can be um, 12 megabytes in, st in storage. And uh, as we um, we prefer to use uh, different models uh, and doing some uh, um, segmentation or evaluation, image processing, and then uh, it really um, limits us the to use those different um, pipelines because the uh, large image size. And uh, the other thing is that the total calcification area um, compared with the whole mammograms uh, is really small. Uh, only, it only takes uh, one, almost the one um, percent uh, area um, of those whole mammograms. Uh, and you can see uh, it's really hard to annotate for the, um, for the experts to look into and the, uh, get the width of each location. So with those, uh, um, we, 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 uh, for, to solve this task, we have some uh, goals that we want to achieve. First, we want to develop an automatic pipeline that can detect the BSA accurately. Uh, and uh, we, uh, because we have uh, the mammograms are often in large size. We want to speed the computation and process such a large data uh, quickly. And uh, then we want to detect, uh, test the effectiveness of those uh, of the BSC detector uh, in unseen data. Test the effectiveness, seeing whether the model can work for the uh, de uh, the future deployment. Uh, and then with the BSC being detected. We want to quantify the BAC based on the area, based on the detection and results. And uh, later on, we also want to demonstrate that the usefulness of uh, quantification, quantifications in tracking BAC progression um, for some uh, some subjects. So um, let's look into some um, BAC annotations in detail. Um, this one I'm showing you the. Um, one mammogram with the uh, original annotation in, in R8. So we can see those uh, annotations are uh, often in length style. The, um, the, we can only learn, um, learn the uh, length and the, uh, we couldn't get any information out of this. And the, uh, so uh, every time we want to um, do the detection of BC, we should get the using deep learning, we should get uh, uh, the mask first for the BAC. Then we can use utilize the, the semantic stem tissue models. Um, to generate the mask, then we want to first follow the line curves and uh, draw uh, plot the um, plot along with the annotations uh, from the start point to the end point. Then we uh, we uh, give the lens, uh, give the curves uh, some uh, width so that we can um, simulate the uh, vessel uh, width. So uh, this will be the final uh, ground truth mask for our models. Um, and uh, you can see that uh, in the right car in the right top corner, there's a, a label scan label that indicates this mammograms will. And this one is actually uh, is not important for our um, uh, for our detection. So we just uh, uh, using uh, some pre-processing techniques to uh, extract only the breast area and uh, care about those uh, um, those parts. Um, 
and notice that uh, for some annotations, they are really close, but they are uh, uh, disconnect, uh, disconnected. Um, and uh, to make uh, our model easier to predict uh, in those areas, uh, we uh, try to um, first uh, um, dilate, uh, do the dilation, then erode, do the erosion to get the very close um, annotations uh, to get, uh, link, linked together. So this one will be uh, much easier for the models to predict uh, in those area. And uh, intuitively we want, we can do the um, segmentation obviously um, by just uh, resizing the original mammograms to smaller sizes. For example, um, the very uh, typical uh, deep learning model uh, used the sizes, for example, 256, 250 by 256, or um, 512 by 512. Uh, and then maybe we can use uh, um, the UNET the traditional segmentation models um, to segment uh, those bases and uh, reset, finally res uh, resize the prediction um, to the original size by interplotting. Um, here's, here I'm showing you the attempts that uh, we have tried. We first have the recessed image, and then uh, in the middle, we are showing the ground truth mask. And uh, in red uh, is the result that we uh, got from UNET. Um, even we can get some uh, overlapping and uh, some uh, quantification results from this uh, prediction. Um, but when we, reset, uh, when we do the uh, resizing, uh, to the original image sizes, then we got um, almost nothing uh, in those uh, quantification metrics with this quantification matrix. Mm. So um, this um, is uh, because that because of the uh, pixel distribution shifting uh, when we do the resizing. Um, and then notice that the BSA vessels are very tiny and uh, narrow, so they are very sensitive to the position. Uh, that's why we couldn't do the um, mammogram, uh, the BSA detection in mammograms, uh, just uh, uh, resizing the original images. So we want to, uh, in order to process, uh, to get the um, accurate uh, segmentations, we, we adopted the patchwise uh, way to do the segmentation. And this is due because of uh, due to the um, it's because of the large image size and also the memory limitations. Um, and uh, notice that we are showing three image patches, the uh, three cases, and uh, to save the um, um, computation um, time and also speed the training, we uh, we exclude those uh, patches with purely maybe background information or purely the uh, breast tissue without any calcifications and only keep the uh, keep those um, patches with uh, a certain um, BC uh, in that um, in that patches um, notice that uh, for example the patch I'm showing here um, if we do the cropping maybe uh, we will um, uh, split the some uh, very um, and minor calcifications along the boundaries. And uh, if we only have, for example, a few pixels uh, uh, and along the boundaries um, for the model to do the prediction, we may, uh, may not get a very high uh, accuracy uh, along with those uh, boundary part. So that's why we, uh, will, we will keep some overlapping area. Uh, those uh, overlapping across the neighbor uh, patches will help us uh, increase the um, um, prediction uh, accuracy and also avoid the boundary effect. After we have all the patchwork results, we can do the concatenation, uh, then we can get the final uh, whole image set results. And in total, we have uh, 60, 661 um, mammograms from 200 feet, uh, 12, uh, 16 subjects. Um, and there are two um, kind of mammograms with different uh, sizes, but they are totally, they are almost uh, um, 
they are all, they are all uh, large in size. Uh, we do the um, patch uh, cropping, then we get uh, finally we randomly choose uh, uh, 527 mammograms for training, and the left uh, 130. Um, 34 mammograms for validation. And they, uh, with the, the pre-processing, uh, we got us almost 3K patches for training, effective um, patches for training, and the 900 patches for validation. And all the patches are cropped uh, uh, with sets of 512, 512 pixels. And uh, we have we keep 60 pixels overlapping across all the neighbor, all the adjacent patches. So the um, unit is one um, famous architecture to cement uh, those uh, um, to do the semantic cementation works. Um, so first we have the input image uh, with uh, some pre fixed uh, studies, then doing some uh, convolution increase the uh, channel of those uh, deep features, and uh, uh, by doing the down sampling we can get some. Um, um, the um, high level features, and uh, uh, after we have the final um, encoded features, uh, we uh, the the original um, encoded the high level different levels uh, features will be uh, uh, concatenated to the um, decode part, and finally got the prediction mask. Um, and um, notice that they are using the uh, very standard convolution layer here uh, in all the, uh, to do the other convolution operations. And, and different, uh, different uh, from their uh, uh, work, we do the, we use the dil dilated uh, convolution. Uh, and so this is why I'm showing the standard convolution. Uh, the standard convolution use uh, pre some predefined uh, filter size and uh, do, um, the, it has the, the um, uh, specific uh, receptive uh, field. This one will help us to get the, to learn the um, high level features of the input data. Well, we, the dilated convolution, uh, different from the standard convolution, uh, we can, uh, the dilated convolution can have, uh, have a wider uh, receptive field and then um, may get um, high, uh, better um, global um, feature representations. So um, th this is the convolution that we, uh, we will use uh, in uh, our model. And our model is called as the unit uh, for the one so uh, fine ways of cementation. The as the unit uh, uh, is a simple context unit in short. Mm, we have the input image Actually, in our case, it will be the input mammogram patches. Uh, going through uh, three convolution layers, we have some uh, uh, um, uh, high level features uh, learn, learned. And then, um, because we want to keep the, without uh, losing the uh, low level information from the original input, we downsample, uh, we downsample the input image, input data uh, by different uh, scales, and then concat the, uh, those uh, original input, downsample input uh, data with the learned of uh, deep, learn, uh, deep features. Uh, and the, after we have the three, con uh, going to the three convolution layers later, then we use the uh, two dilated the convolution. Uh, these two different, uh, uh, these two um, dilated convolution are with different uh, stress, different receptive fields. So um, they can learn different uh, scales of the um, high level uh, image, high level um, features. And uh, following the same uh, unit uh, architecture, we also do the um, uh, different um, um, encoder part and the decoder part uh, concatenating. And the, Finally, we add them together, uh, add them together, and uh, and do the up, uh, up sampling with the inter bilinear interpolation uh, um, for each uh, after each um, layer. Finally, we use a, a final convolution to uh, get back to uh, get back and get the output masks. In our case, we only predict whether it is the BAC or not, so we only have one. <clears throat> channel for the um, final um, prediction. 
um, in our work, we compared uh, with uh, a set of uh, set of the ad um, dimension models, um, Sagnet, and uh, this this um, figure shows the the different uh, the parameters of uh, um, of different models. So we have Sagnet um, has the best. Uh, uh, has the highest, uh, pr uh, has the most parameters, while well, the um, deep lab with three unit and link net also um, have very, um, very many parameters compared with those EF, uh, EF net, and ES net, and also um, other net. And our model uh, as a unit actually has uh, uh, the standard fewest uh, parameters. Um, and the, depending on their model, their parameters and their size, we uh, we uh, we treated those models in this area as non-real uh, time um, segmentation models, and the, uh, those models in the uh, with the fewer uh, parameters will be treated as uh, real time. Um, segmentation models, and this is uh, important for us to do the um, quick. Uh, segmentation and quantification later. Here I'm showing uh, the um, patchwise results. Um, and the in, in total, there are four cases for patchwise uh, patch, patch situations. And the for first, we, we can see that there are some um, um, other calcification uh, here, but they are not the one that we want to focus on. And the, from the ground truth, we can see the true calcification area actually along the boundaries. Uh, and uh, I'm showing the, um, the reals with uh, reals, uh, with some segment, contest net, unit, city net, and S unit in the very uh, right part. And uh, you can notice that for the stack net and the contest net, uh, you uh, and also the unit they have uh, some um, false positives, and which may affect the um, the detection accuracy. Uh, and also for the second case, we can see that uh, for the first uh, for the BAC area, we uh, the the background of this one has some high intensity uh, incentive intensities and this uh, um, this high intensity may affect uh, the um, model's prediction uh, and you can see here uh, the second net and also the contest that they either have some false positive or they have some uh, um, false negative uh, and they, but for the other two cases they are much easier for the models to segment that's why um, Almost all the models can perform very well, but I notice that our model can all, um, perform uh, relatively good for, uh, compared with others. Um, here I'm showing four uh, examples of the whole MSI results. Uh, so the the first column indicates the original mammograms, uh, and the the uh, standard column indicates the ground truth for the breast arterial calcifications area. And you can see uh, if we collect, uh, we, if we uh, realize the BAC in the whole mammogram studies, they can, they can be very scared, uh, scattered and also can be very irregular in, set, in shapes. And uh, uh, you can see uh, most of the models can work very well. And our SC unit uh, is also, perform, uh, is also um, doing good jobs. And, but you can see the difference, uh, the contest net has the, uh, still has a lot of uh, mm, true, uh, false positives. Um, after we have the segmentation uh, predictions, we want to- uh, Can I have a quick question here? Um, sure. For your last uh, previous slide, um, how do you combine the patch uh, Y segmentations to form the whole image segmentation? Because you um, have uh, overlap between uh, patches, right? Yeah, but uh, when we do the cropping, then we keep uh, we keep the location information that we just had to as uh, uh, the uh, very uh, the top uh, left corner position and also the right uh, corner, um, right bottom corner position. So this will indicate that uh, the uh, 
indicates the location, give us the location information. And with the, even with the, uh, the overlapping, the overlapping part, we will adopt the, the one with the highest, uh, with higher probability. Okay, okay, I see. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, when we have the um, cementation masks ready, then we want to evaluate uh, those uh, cementation results quantified uh, in uh, quantitatively. So we have uh, gen so these uh, quantification for cementation are very typical. They have the uh, we can evaluate them in precision, recall, and accuracy. Uh, precision um, indicates that the true party results. Uh, the two party results along all the uh, all the predictive predicted uh, two party. Uh, well, the recall give us that uh, how many um, two party results uh, predictions are relevant with the real um, party results. Uh, accuracy accounts for both the uh, both the true party and the true negative. Uh, but when we have imbalanced the true positive and true negative, uh, this accuracy may not so uh, may not um, reflect the true um, model performance as the precision recall. But we still report report this one uh, as the, um, some um, reference. And then we also have the F1 score and the JCAD index uh, values uh, for performance evaluation. Um, F1 score is also called death score. Uh, this one, it, um, it takes two times of the true positives with all the, uh, with two, uh, two times the true positives and also the false uh, positives and false negatives. Uh, we just, so uh, from the image we can show, they, we can see that they are really care about the, so the overlapping uh, between the uh, prediction and also the ground truth. So the higher uh, this uh, the overlapping uh, area, the larger the overlapping area, the better the performance is. Uh, it's also same for the jack the uh, jack the index value. Jack, jack the index value is also called LVO value. Uh, the these two are just two different uh, evaluation metrics to um, to the to give us the the idea of how, how much overlapping we have from the ground truth and also the prediction. Uh, here, this table is, show, uh, is uh, for the quanti uh, quantitative, qualitative, quantitative results. Uh, for the, we have both the patchwise results and also the whole MSI results. Uh, with the, for the whole MSI results are reported in those columns with the gray background. Um, and generally, from the accuracy, we can say we they are nearly very close to each other because we have a lot of background um, pixels. That that those background pixels takes uh, take most of the part um, for the for the accuracy part for the accuracy metrics. That's why uh, across all the different uh, models, the performance is nearly same. Um, but for the mm, Recall precision, uh, EF net, and also uh, and uh, P FPE net. They have different uh, advantages. Uh, our model can have the best F1 score and the Jack index value for the patchwork results. Um, and others uh, for the whole MSI results, uh, deep net, uh, deep lab V3 and U net may work may work um, very well. Uh, but compared since uh, those models are arranged in the order of uh, um, parameters. So uh, our model here actually uh, indicates the real time models and the opinion has the fewest uh, parameters compared with this one, our model can uh, have better performance while still uh, maintain the speed uh, for, calcul for calculation. And doing the, um, with since the uh, BSA detection is only the intermediate uh, um, task for BSA quantification, we here we want to quantify the actual um, the BSA pixels um, in uh, with some metrics. And the in order to consider about that, we should uh, have the uh, we can use the total classification area detected, also the intensities of the pixels within that area. Um, we may consider diff using uh, different thresholding uh, values to see how would the intensity 
the pixel intensity affect the final quantification. And also, um, instead of the only considering about the uh, intensities, uh, values, we also um, care about the how many uh, pixels in that area that has the um, defined the characteristic. So first we have the PM as the, uh, as the sum of mask probability metric. And then we have AM, which is the sum of mask area. Uh, and also we propose to use SIM, which is the sum of mask intensity metric. So these this three, uh, PM consider, considers uh, the probability. The AM considers the, the, the counts of the pixels. The SIM considers the intensity of the Mm, pixels uh, in that area. Um, after that, we also want to uh, evaluate using that when we use different threshold intensity values, uh, what we, we have for the uh, basic quantification. So we have uh, the TMX, which is the sum of mask area with the threshold uh, intensity X metric. And the TSMX uh, is the sum of metric mask with the intensity threshold, threshold X. <clears throat> Uh, this one, T, uh, TMX actually use the, the threshold X um, to uh, filter those uh, irrelevant um, pixels, irrelevant uh, pixels with, uh, for, uh, with the non-ideal intensities and uh, uh, we got the total mask area. Uh, this one, TSMX uh, counts the total intensity values. And to choose the uh, Best uh, um, in threshold, um, intensity threshold, we did some um, experiments. And uh, <coughs> here I'm showing uh, how we do the selection. Uh, first, we have a ground truth for the BAC um, here. And uh, I'm, the blue curve, the blue uh, boundary indicates the ground truth masks, which is what we got from the uh, plot of very beginning. Um, to generate the annotations. Uh, then we do, uh, and you can notice that if you look into the boundary uh, of the pixel, uh, pixel uh, calcified uh, vessels, you can see there's some round and uh, there are redundant uh, um, area uh, that we don't want to include in the evaluation. So we can do the uh, some uh, thresholding with the different uh, intensity values. Uh, we, we have tried uh, 25, 50, 70, uh, 5, and 100, and 125. Finally, we adopt the 100 as the thresholding uh, value, uh, which we, uh, in which we can, um, can, we can maintain most part of the essential uh, high, um, highest intensity pixels and uh, without lose the more, um, we we'll lose, lose much uh, other information along the masked area. With that, uh, we uh, try the five quantification metrics, or well, one PM, AM, SIM, and the TM with the uh, threshold X100, uh, and also TSM with the uh, threshold at 100. Uh, we quantify those um, calcified pixels in the, uh, with our um, within our prediction and compared to the ground truth area. Uh, we perform the same uh, evaluate, uh, quantification value and uh, plot. Uh, so the, this plotting are showing the R square correlation. Uh, you can see that the, um, to, uh, you, for the PM, AM, all the five uh, evaluation metrics, they all have very high correlation. And the TM uh, 100, with 100 threshold, we got the highest uh, R square correlation and uh, the lowest uh, standard uh, duration error. So that's why later on we will use this uh, metric to uh, track, uh, to quantify the detected BSA for um, on-scene data um, tracking unseen data uh, evaluation and quantification. Um, since we have already got the, um, we, ha we have the model to detect the BSA accurately, and we have proposed the um, metrics to, to quantify the detected BSA. So we want to uh, evaluate, evaluate that uh, whether the, this uh, these methods can, um, can work for the uh, BSA progression. Um, so we examine 26 new subjects, uh, which are not included in the in the original training data. Um, 
and each subject has uh, have the um, five to 12 years in imaging history. Uh, each one, each subject has uh, has four standard screening mammogram, mammography wheels. Uh, and in total, we have uh, almost 900 uh, mammograms. <laughs> we first, after we have those mammograms, we first run our as a unit uh, model uh, in these uh, mammograms and get the uh, prediction, which is the uh, um, BAC area. Uh, output output it by the model and uh, so here I'm showing um, the try uh, the BSC progression uh, detected by our model. Um, so this one, the first one uh, is a subject uh, that I first uh, had in two thousand nine, uh, and until the very end we had the the twenty twenty, and the green uh, marked the area, uh, the detected BAC area, and you can see that uh, with the uh, with the time uh, we can see the BAC uh, are progressed with the uh, different uh, um, er uh, in different areas. The uh, the total um, from the image where we can see the total BAC are increasing, uh, and the big, even. We can see that in the mammogram images. So we also want to quantify that uh, uh, whether the BAC um, is actually increasing with time. So we use our TEM one hundred metric to um, uh, to evaluate that how uh, those values uh, um, will change along with the time. Uh, we, in this one, in this plot, we have five patients um, showed uh, each one, each, um, each color indicates one, one patient. Uh, and you can see uh, we, we are showing almost uh, um, 10 years data. Uh, the left, the y-axis represents the total amount uh, numbers in the case um, of TM100 metrics. Um, and you can see um, the, those quantifications along with the um, time are increasing, which, can, um, which, which shows that uh, our method can um, help track, track the um, progression and also quantify those uh, um, and it shows, uh, and this plot shows that the effect in is effectiveness of those uh, of our method. Mm -hmm. After we have that, then uh, we can we think that uh, in the future we can deploy uh, those the models and also the quantifications um, in user personal laptop and get the results quickly. Um, so in conclusion, we have uh, proposed a lightweight a lightweight and accurate sedimentation models as a unit for the um, YSO calcification sedimentation. Um, and uh, we adopted a patch-based way um, to detect uh, those calcified pixels with, uh, on the um, high resolution, um, resolution images patches. And we also compared uh, both the patchwise results and the, the whole missile results with the state of the models. Uh, and uh, um, with, after we have the results ready, we, pro, uh, we proposed the five quantification uh, metrics for BAC. And uh, we uh, also uh, quantified the BAC uh, based on the predicted uh, calcification masks. Finally, uh, the results show that our model can track the progression of BSA for such subjects longitudinally. Uh, and we think that uh, the, this one will be useful for the um, future uh, large retrospective studies. Um, this, uh, this work actually uh, is uh, um, from our paper as a unit, uh, which uh, is already accepted, um, our journal Medical Fix 2021. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Sophie. So any other questions for Sophie? Oh, 
Hi. Um, thanks, Sophie. That was a great um, talk. I had a couple of questions about the annotations themselves. Like, how um, do do doctors actually sit and annotate like such a um, fine grained annotation? And is is it especially if it's a four K resolution image, then the annotation process itself could be a little noisy, or um, you might have variability between um, annotators. So I want to know what would um, how that affects performance and so on. Um, yeah, so because we couldn't get very accurate uh, semantician uh, maps, they can only provide us the, um, those uh, line style annotations along the vessels. Uh, the, and the experts annotated the, those uh, mammograms in the MADI AI um, platform, and they can provide us the um, annotation marks and also um, enlarge the image or zoom in the image. So, um, but, but in total we can, uh, but finally we still can get the, only the, the, uh, the line style, the very, um, the line style annotation. Um, yeah, the, because we, then later on we do the uh, plotting and you know, adding some ways in, uh, Pretty fun ways to simulate uh, uh, the vessels, um, but we we believe um, from the experiment we can show uh, we can see that uh, those ma those masks mask still capture the very essential information, the essential intensities uh, pixels uh, in this area, um, and as uh, if provide those um, uh, masks, uh, the dependent model show learning that uh, the difference uh, between the calcified pixels uh, uh, compared to the other background tissue pixels. So <clears throat> yeah, that's why we did the quantification later uh, rather than just rely on the segmentation. Got it. OK, thank you. Actually, Nandita, just to continue with that question, the, mm -hmm. one of the radiologists who annotated actually is in the call, which is hurry. Oh. <laughs> hey. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so actually, so um, one of our collaborators is a nephrologist, Charles O'Neill. He's actually not a radiologist, but he has spent the last several years um, and more actually working with DAC. So what he did is he annotated a subset and then we hired a couple of students and he trained them to annotate the images. Even though the images original resolution is 4K, um, mm -hmm. you don't really have to go one-to-one -one on Zoom to, to see the BAC. Uh, I, Sophie chose that for the model just to maximize the performance of detecting texture. I think one of the things that we didn't talk about much during the chat is that in mammograms, as you may or may not know, there's a lot of other calcifications that are not arterial calcifications. So mm -hmm. there's ductal calcifications that can look like vessels. And then there's obviously all the other calcifications associated with malignancy. So it was important to provide the model with full resolution patches for development, but from an annotation perspective, um, it was around four to five minutes of annotation per image. The image Sophie has shown here is particularly, you know, strife with calcifications. Many of them only, you know, had one vessel. So um, we were pleased that we didn't have to do more than the 600, you know, that, that actually works fairly well with what is considered in computer vision kind of a relatively small number of cases. Yep. Yeah, that is super interesting to know that it took only five minutes for our meditation. I think that's, and, that can. And Nandita, so here another interesting thing is that, it, that you can do a lot of pre-processing, right? So if you join mm -hmm. like last and last calcium, actually that you know that that would be like a kind of like branching and the tree like right. you can also do a lot of pre-processing to draw that annotations like rather than really manually following mm -hmm. the yeah. and actually before we move on to other questions along the same um, thread um, is it how important is it to distinguish this type of calcification from any other type of calcification and is it um like in case the model mm -hmm. um, misunderstands other type of calcifications, is that a bad thing or is that acceptable for clinical practice? 
No, it, it's really important. Um, the, the implications of arterial calcification are, are with relation to cardiovascular disease and um, other vascular calcifications elsewhere in the body, like peripheral arterial disease, whereas the other types of calcification in the breast. So what Sophie has shown here on the top leftmost image is actually ductal calcification. All those horizontal dark lines you see are ductal mm -hmm. calcification. And if you look, follow across that row, you'll notice that the ground truth annotation on the, the next column shows a little bit of arterial calcification that's relatively faint with respect to those really dense horizontal ductal calcification. So those ductal calcifications are completely benign and they have no mm -hmm. bearing on cardiovascular disease, whereas arterial calcifications are, are much more important. And then um, obviously you have beyond that, all of the calcifications that are associated with malignancy, like pleomorphic calcifications and their, and their distribution. So um, it is very important actually to identify vascular versus other um, in, this, in this setting. I see. So just, um, so Sophie, I think your model is actually better than other models in this respect because the unit and the context next seem to be actually taking the other type of calcification. So that's a win that you, you can also like, emphasize a little more. So mm -hmm. that's very cool. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions from people? Um, I have a question about the interpretation of the uh, metrics. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so is there any, like, yeah, how do we interpret the, the value of the, like, the TA and uh, metric? Or how is it associated with, like, the possibility of um, cardiovascular disease? Or, yeah, is there any clinical interpretation of that? Yeah, I think, um, so with our quantifications uh, with this metric, uh, with um, we look into the image data and also the final quantification values, and we see that uh, actually those values are also increasing. And the, uh, based on the uh, observation of the images, we can say maybe for this year, um, the twenty twenty data, um, this one this. Uh, subject may have some diseases, cardiovascular diseases, and uh, we can in treat those uh, amount data indicate uh, as a threshold value that say uh, if the total mass of those uh, calcification uh, reaching this uh, this point, then the, this this subject may um, have high risk of developing those uh, diseases. Um, and we can, we think that this may um, be useful for the disease diagnosis uh, uh, as a, as raw information to make a decision. Mm -hmm. So do you have plan to like um yeah like um apply it to downstream tasks like uh, predict uh related cardiovascular disease uh based on the segmentation and also the metrics. For now, we have the. Uh, done that yet? Uh, we just think uh, so. This is just for um, for uh, for providing some potential tools. Uh, as you mentioned, that uh, maybe it will be useful for downstream tasks. Maybe so we are, yeah, we're actually planning um, right now. We have a couple of things that you know, because the utility of this tool beyond you know the technical success is obviously using it to. Um, predict. So the, the benefit really, if you think about the big picture, yeah. essentially half the population gets mammograms, right? And um, the difference between mammograms and coronary CTs is that mammograms occur annually in patients for a completely different disease and coronary CTs or catheterizations or CTAs only occur in symptomatic patients, right? So if you can use BAC to um, catch patients that are at high risk for cardiovascular events earlier than they would become symptomatic, then perhaps you can make an intervention, right? So there's a couple different uh, areas we're looking to correlate this. The obvious ones are obvious are, are comparison with CADRAD scores on coronary CT or coronary calcium scores. That would be kind of a direct one-to-one -one comparison. There's also a lot of literature that our collaborator did, um, Charlie O'Neill, with correlation of peripheral arterial disease. So PAD without getting into the weeds, actually atherosclerosis 
is kind of the, the calcification that most people think about when you think about arterial calcification. That's the kind that happens in the brain and in the heart. It turns out that the calcification that happens in breasts is different. It's, um, it's medial sclerosis. So it happens in a different layer of the vessel and it's the same layer that is associated with peripheral arterial disease and it affects the flexibility of the vessel. So there's associations with prefer peripheral arterial disease, um, potentially cardiovascular disease, and then also like um, deficiencies or, or alterations in mineral metabolism. So trying to correlate this to different metabolites like cal calcium, phosphorus, uh, and their effects on um, or, or their correlation with patients in end-stage in, in renal disease. So there are a lot of, the, the goal is to use this as kind of a tool to enable rapid evaluation of large numbers of patients uh, and look for correlation. Like this could be free information that we get to then link to other diseases that are kind of more clinically relevant than just whether or not the patient has calcification in the breast. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Um, I have one question about, um, so is, do you also have all the electronic medical records for these patients? Um, is this yeah, data have, yeah, we have their whole encounter data of these patients. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that the is, trick, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I was going to say the tricky part is, you know, it's easy to mine the ICD codes and the lab values and stuff. Um, when you begin to look at outcomes, we have to think about any, any, any deep, deep learning or any computer vision tool that you develop and then you want to apply clinically, you have to really think carefully about the curation of your test set. So training data can be noisy assuming it's large enough, but if you want to publish or release something like this, or, or even if you're so lucky to get it into clinical use, you have to think very carefully about the curation of the test set, right? And what out, what hard outcomes are going to measure? Because an ICD code of coronary artery disease is yeah. extremely noisy. So actually, right? so, actually, we check that. We, we, we observe that on this patient, actually, like 70% patient is missing any kind of card coronary artery disease outcomes starting from like second year, you know? So that is pretty disappointing because, you know, like ICD codes, they are most of the time is missing or erroneous. So what we are doing, we are planning actually is to conduct a study where we'll follow at least thousand patients that follow up means like, like calling them like in home, like surveying them and just follow the outcome for five to 10 years. Are there any other questions um, that people have? Okay, so if not, um, I guess for the first time we'll actually end on time. So thanks Sophie for taking us through um, this. And um, if, if there are no more questions, let's thank Sophie with some round of virtual applause. And if there are follow-up uh, questions, you can always um, email Sophie or you can um, uh, upload your questions on our YouTube video or on the website directly. So 